Welcome to the Cybersecurity Simplified Podcast, where we take the mystery out of today's top security threats and solutions. Cybersecurity is an IT issue to be managed by the IT department, right? Our guest today on Cybersecurity Simplified will explain that is only half true. In fact, cybersecurity impacts the entire business, not only that its IT infrastructure works, but operational uptime, the privacy of its customer data, compliance with regulations, ability to collect revenue, even the company reputation. Our guest today on Cybersecurity Simplified will explain why cybersecurity is not just an IT problem, it's a business problem. I'm your co-host, Susanna Song, Director of Communications at Highwire Networks. And I'm Dave Barton, CTO at Highwire Networks. And we have the special honor and privilege to have our Chief Executive Officer of Highwire Networks, Mark Porter, on with us. Hi there, Mark. Hi, guys. I didn't know it was such a great honor, but I appreciate being <laughs> invited anyways. <laughs> it's always an honor to sit down and chat with Mark. Uh, David, you and I, as well as the entire Overwatch team, we talk a lot about Overwatch and the cybersecurity uh, industry, focusing on it being a business problem much more than just a technical problem. Uh, Mark, I know you share in that same kind of concept and idea. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, why you believe so firmly and so um, strongly about this being a business problem? Sure. Well, first, it's because uh, I'm fortunate enough to have guys like David and Phil and their whole teams around to make sure that it's not a technical problem for me because uh, it's way above my pay grade in terms of being able to solve for it that way. But um, when when we look at it as a team, and it, and it really truly really takes a team, it's a large part of our of our weekly routine talking about what's going on, how how we're solving for various. Uh, challenges, um, it, it really becomes apparent because there's nothing that we do when we look at cybersecurity just internally as a CEO, as a business leader, there's nothing that we do that isn't affected by our cybersecurity footing and that we don't have to take into consideration when we're looking at all of the assets of the business and how to protect them. And we look at the practical risk uh, exposures that we're dealing with. It is a complex solution, a complex problem that requires, you know, hours and hours of thought into how we go at it as we're doing it ourselves, right? We're doing it not just for our partners, but we have to secure our own environment. And um, I'm fortunate that we've got such talented folks around to help with this situation, but not every mid-sized business has that. And, you know, really uh, just personally strikes me as part of my mission to be available to talk to others, to let Phil and David be available to talk to others, you know, whether they be business partners, other entrepreneurs, other, other businesses, to have those sorts of conversations in their, you know, what I consider spare time, which is what they would consider when they're supposed to be sleeping. Um, you know, th those are really, really tricky situations that if you're not looking at it from the business perspective and from a risk analysis perspective, and how to solve for it practically, it, it could end up hamstringing the average business. And, and how's the uh, the response rate been as you go talk to partners and then customers about the business problem versus the technical problem? Well, it's it's, it's really uh, it's interesting, and I wish I could I wish I could spend more time talking with people about it because. To some degree or another, when we talk with our partners, I think many of them um, come from a technical orientation. And so when they're speaking with end users, they're talking in terms of things that they often understand a little better, which is that technical part of the stack, right? But when you're talking, especially to a small or mid-sized customer, you know, they're scared. They're concerned about how much is this going to cost? What do I get out of it? How are you going to help me with it? Um, you know, what are your capabilities, and what happens um, when I'm breached? And 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 you know, as you know, we talk in terms of when because to some degree or another, we're struggling with cybersecurity every day in different ways. It's not just a breach from the outside. There's insider threat. There's 
simple things like data leakage. And, um, you know, you have to account for all of those. You have to figure out how to, you know, how to, how to assure a customer that, you know, if nothing else, if they do all of the right things and it still happens, they're at least creating a scenario where they can look their customers in the eye and their employees in the eye and say, we did everything that we can do and we're continuing to do everything that we can do to protect your data and to protect our brand and to make sure that, you know, we're, we're the safest company to do business with in our sector. Let's break down what some of these business problems are, Mark and David. Uh, with the cost of cybercrime estimated to reach $6 trillion globally this year, uh, there's a staggering demand for skilled cybersecurity professionals to combat these threats and also manage uh, cyber defenses. The New York Times reports there will be a three and a half million um, there will be three and a half million open cybersecurity jobs across the globe this year alone. Uh, we talk about the business problem of just the shortage of, of talent, right? Well, the shortage and, and the relative expense too. And, and when you look at, um, you know, I, I, again, if we talk about it in terms of business challenges, when we talk to partners, we see our business partners, our MSP partners, and some of our other channel partners looking at it and saying, you know, well, what should my cybersecurity stack be? Mm -hmm. I see that all the time. We see that on, on groups on Facebook and other technical uh, hangouts where, where, where they're chatting about it. And the, the reality is it's about so much more than the stack and the tooling. It's about the people, the time, how much time, what's your budget? For staffing, cybersecurity is a 24-7, 365 business. It, it, it's not something that you can just do for your customers during the day. In fact, based on geography and based on habits, um, it's it's probably you know the, the bigger risk you might have is when your customer when you're when the end users go home and go to bed, cyber criminals are just starting work. So um, they're going to go at it when they're least likely to be detected. So when you look at the people issues, it's not enough of them. Training is all over the place. Even if they're trained in general on, on hunting, then you got to train them on your tool set. Then you got to train them on a customer's environment. Then you got to have policies and procedures. And SOC work is not NOC work. And, it, uh, you know, I would venture that if anybody is running a NOC and thinks they're going to, you know, just use those existing people to be security analysts, aside from the fact that they may not be technically capable of it, if they have the bandwidth to do that without adding staff, I would venture that it's probably not a very profitable operation or very efficient because working on security incidents takes a lot more time most of the time than just swatting down an alarm and turning it off or changing a setting or whatever. It's, it's a lot of research. It's a lot of correlation. It's a lot of looking at events. It's a lot of understanding and parsing through logs and trying to look at, is this more than one thing? Is it, is it not? All of those pieces. So I think, I think you know, what we see is that with 20 years of delivering services and having you know, 200,000 technical professionals at our disposal worldwide uh, on any given day, we have a really deep bench. And we're really continuing to focus on how to grow that bench. Things like Overwatch University, things like some of the new so some of the new acquisitions we've done, where we're really moving further and deeper into the whole concept of human capital management and how do we proactively identify um, people that are ripe for training that can be trained, you know, our way in our in our in our tactics in our processes and build that deep bench so that we can continue to add and scale? And then how do we build the tool sets around those people and processes? And I think that's really a critical piece. Whereas if you're looking at this from a technical perspective, um, it's very different way of solving for it, right? Everybody's trying to find a tool or some sort of automation effort or some sort of magic bullet that solves all these issues. And at the end of the day, this is a complex managed service 
that requires a lot of people, a lot of process, and a lot of expense. And no, Dave, you know it better than Mark and myself. I mean, you're in the thick of it. We talk a lot about correlation, how a lot of, you know, these CEOs and CISOs at, um, you know, at, at enterprises even, they're having a hard time with their many tools trying to figure out how to, um, you know, analyze and correlate some of that data. A lot of them well, don't talk I think to you, each other. Yeah, you, you're touching on the second business problem that we talk a lot about, and that is too many tool sets. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you've heard me talk about going to RSA and having 1500 booths with products and most of those products don't talk to each other. And so we, we in the security space exacerbate the headcount problem by giving them more tools that they have to be experts at. And so you end up with, to Mark's point, half trained people trying to manage way too many tool sets and, and data that doesn't talk to each other. And, you know, that business problem is one of the things that we help solve by deploying an XDR platform, by integrating these data sets, correlating across those, making it easier to get those nuggets or those needles out of the haystacks of data. Because if most people don't realize, unless you're in the data every day, there's so much data there. Right. You I heard a statistic um, that the Internet is putting out 20 times the amount of data daily than what we have in printed form anywhere in the world. If you take all the printed form and we're putting out 20 to 30 times that every day in content, whether it's data from my phone to the network or a SaaS app or whatever. That's ridiculous amounts of data. And if I can't integrate and correlate, I might as well turn the tools off. There is a magic bullet. It's turning it all off. Uh, but at that point, we can't generate revenue. So we've got to find a happy medium. And tools like XDR platforms help us get there. Yeah, there are way too many solutions to begin with, right? Yeah, when you... I think about the fact that, you know, I see emails at least once a week from customers who are coming to us and saying, can, what, what, what's the likelihood that you'll take over my tools? I'd like you to look, I'd like you to look into managing leverage your sock to manage my tool set. And it is a service that, that we can deliver and it's something that we can do at scale. It's an interesting thing though, when you look at what, is often the underlying issue is that the, the client feels that they've hit a wall. They've gotten to a place the end you, the end user, these are larger organizations. These are, you know, I'll call it small of, of, of enterprise or even midsize enterprise type accounts where they've hit a wall. Their budget has exploded on them. They're tired of continuing to try to hire and lose people and then hire again and, and all that stuff. So what have they become? They become an HR shop. They become a shop that can manage a tool set, do some development around their tool set. Uh, and um, that's really it. Are they secure? Not in their own opinion, typically. They don't feel like they're doing a great job at it. And, um, and they don't feel like they're getting the value for what they've put into it. And that's a... That's a huge issue because it's not a journey that ends, right? It's 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 a never-ending, constantly evolving journey. The threat landscape keeps changing. So people are just pouring money into their tools over and over and over. And then, you know, if you don't want to be a service provider, then you're probably not suited to doing it internally because that's at the end of the day what it is. And exactly. You know, we believe, especially for the mid-size enterprise and down, there's a better way. And it's got to be a shared services model because the only way you're going to accomplish it is at scale. Um, and, and we, you know, pick the tool sets for them. We're now offering multiple tool sets across uh, some some common bounds, if you will, some some common sets of functionalities because we understand that this isn't a one size fits all. 
but we do. Uh, so we do want to be able to accommodate that. And we make sure that there's not a ton of overlap in the tool set so that for our clients who want visibility into everything, we can give them levels of granularity that they don't see for others. We can, we take over complete management of the tool and just allow them to focus on what's important to them, which is their business strategy, their cyber security strategy elements, possibly uh, some of their certifications in, in some cases. So if a customer's got a small team and they need to be, you know, HIPAA high trust or they need to be PCI certified, you know, they need their PCI certification, they want to have SOC 2, let them focus on those things that are important because those things have value to their customers. And then let us focus on, you know, getting the right people in the right seats, making sure the tooling is honed, baselining their environment, honing their environment constantly, and um, and pointing out to them when we see things that might be opportunities for additional services that they could benefit from, or, or just simply being able to bring them back reliable data to make good business decisions. Because at the end of the day, we have no insight into their business and security can provide a tremendous amount of visibility into how the network's being utilized, but it doesn't do any good if we're not presenting it back into something that's digestible to the people who are setting the strategy and working in the business. A lot of great um, insight there, Mark. And if you want to continue this conversation, uh, please reach out. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. It's a wrap for episode 10. Uh, Thank you, Mark Porter, CEO at Highwire Networks. And thank you to our listeners for joining us. So if you have feedback about today's podcast or questions for David or the Overwatch team, please contact us at overwatchmarketing at highwirenetworks.com. Well, until next time, I'm Susanna Song. And I'm David Barton. And this is Cybersecurity Simplified. From all of us here at Overwatch by Highwire Networks, thank you for listening. We'll catch you next time on the Cybersecurity Simplified podcast. To learn more, visit us at highwirenetworks.com slash podcast.